St. Clair of Assisi, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the feast day of the beautiful Claire of Assisi, who was inspired by the preaching of St. Francis of Assisi when she was just a teenager with a very comfortable life and a very honorable marriage ahead of her to renounce all of her wealth and to follow our Lord. She just wasn't sure, as young people sometimes aren't, exactly when and how to do this. But one Palm Sunday, when she was too shy to go to the communion rail to receive the blessed palm from the hands of the bishop, why, the bishop went down to her and gave her the palm. And she considered that to be a sign from God that she was meant to do what she was going to do and to do it quickly. So she made arrangements with St. Francis and his friars to meet them at their chapel that night, after nightfall. And um, she dressed herself in her best uh, clothing, and she wore all of her jewels. And uh, as they say, I just read this this morning, I didn't know this, but they say that in, in that part of, uh, of Italy, there was a custom that there were two doors in the house, one regular door for coming and going, and another door just for the body of a deceased family member to be carried out for burial. It was called the door of death. It usually had a lot of things, furniture piled in front of it. She removed everything from in front of the door of death, and she passed through that door on her way to San Damiano to meet St. Francis, because truly she was dying to herself, to her wealth, to her independence, her freedom, to her will, and to the world, so she could live to our Lord. Remember, you and I do that same thing by holy baptism. And we renew that by each holy communion, each time that we really take holy water or pray. We want to renew the graces of our baptism to be plunged into Christ's death, and then to live only for our Lord from now on. <clears throat> well, she, she passed through that door. She met St. Francis in the friars. St. Francis chopped off her hair, and then she removed her beautiful robes, and she was given a very simple, uh, rough tunic and veil to place on instead. And because he didn't have a convent yet, St. Francis placed her with the Benedictine nun. When her father found out, he was furious, and he went after her and tried to, he, uh, tried, he and one of his sons tried to pull St. Clair out of the convent, but unsuccessfully. They say that she was like St. Uh, Lucy. St. Lucy, during her martyrdom, was a column that was immovable. And so, too, they tried this way and that, and they could not make St. Clair to budge. Both by her will and by her physical weight, she was staying put in the convent. Well, soon St. Francis had a convent for her at San Damiano, and there she continued her novitiate, and she never left that place for over 50 years, where she was a nun and then the abbess of that little group. They, they grew to be 17, including her own sister and her mother, who joined her convent, and then the order was spread throughout Italy, throughout Europe, as far away as Prague in Bohemia, uh, St. Agnes, the daughter of the king, became a poor Clara there during the lifetime of the foundress. And all of this, mind you, was a real Franciscan spirit, all full of joy and of happiness and of glee at uh, being entirely dependent upon God's providence for everything, truly to embrace holy poverty 100%. The poor Clares never wore shoes, and they never wore stockings, and they didn't sleep on beds, and they never, and they never spoke unless they really needed to, for, for the sake of charity or some other good reason, and they never ate meat. They did all of these penances, and they didn't have any money or investment. So they were entirely dependent on God's providence. Back then, you see, every convent or every church had an endowment, usually in the way of land or fields or flocks or things like that, which would give a secured annual income from which the church would be run or the priest taken care of, or in this case the nuns would be taken care of with all of their needs. 
St. Clair wanted to be totally poor and just depend on God. Whatever would come in in the way of begging, the lay sisters would go out and beg every day. They would be content with that. And they didn't want to own anything, not even the land of their little of their little convent. They wanted the Franciscans to own that. Well, everybody was very shocked and scandalized that you can't do that. And actually, it went so far that the great Pope Innocent III was in the neighborhood when St. Clair was dying, and he came to her convent and he gave her uh, the last rites, and he said to her, and I absolve you from all of this business of your poverty. And she said to him, Holy Father, I need to be absolved from my sins, but not from my poverty. She was sort of uh, very spiritually stubborn with the Pope, and she insisted on this total dependence on God, inspired to do so as a way of making reparation for so many in the church and in the world who, because of the love of money and of possessions, were going straight down to hell. That's the beauty of St. Clair, an entire dependence upon God and a true living of a spiritual death, baptism, which made her more alive than most people. When the Saracens, who were uh, Muslim uh, mercenary troops, under Frederick II, the German Emperor, were besieging uh, Assisi. Then uh, they came to the convent first and they were going to sack the convent. St. Clair, who was sick as usual, she was an invalid for many years, had herself carried to the, uh, to the little wall around the convent. And then she had the breath of the Blessed Sacrament brought out. And the corporal was laid there on the wall and our Lord in the, in the ciborium was placed there. And she knelt down and in a loud voice prayed, O oh Lord, I can't save these sisters. Now, you have to do this for me. I'm dependent upon you. And our Lord answered her in the voice of a child. And our Lord said, I have protected them and I will protect them. And so he did. And so the, the, the troops went away and then St. Clair said, now, you know, we have to pray for our city because they have given us food and taken care of us for all of these years. That's your duty now, sisters. So the sisters put on sackcloth and ashes, and they prayed day and night until finally the Muslim troops withdrew from Assisi and left the town in peace. Just a little bit about this wonderful saint. Last of all, our St. Francis found hospitality with the they were called back then the poor ladies. Now they're called the poor Clares. Remember, he had a little kind of a tree house and a walnut tree where he would go to rest and to pray after some big bout of preaching somewhere. Well, he was in his tree house on the 13th of June of this particular year, and it, he received an intimation he would die that day. And so he came down from the tree house and he, he got himself into a kind of a cart, and the cart went very slowly over the dusty roads toward Assisi, where he meant to die, but they got as far as the poor Clare convent, and uh, he went into the chapel's quarters, and St. Anthony sat up in a chair so he could breathe easier, and he started to sing the Lord's hymn of Our Lady's office, O Gloriosa Domina, and as St. Anthony was sitting there in the poor Clare's convent, singing to the Blessed Mother, he died, a very beautiful death, and in a very beautiful place. Let us ask both St. Anthony and St. Clair to pray for us. As you kneel down, we'll just say a little prayer to St. Clair before we start the 13 Tuesday devotion. <clears throat> St. Clair, glorious virgin of the 13th and greatest of centuries, whose fame and renown are known to all the Christian world, hear my prayer and beg of God to grant my petition, if it be for his greater honor and glory and for the good of my own soul. Make me love poverty as thou didst love it, and practice it whilst on earth, and give me courage to reverence this holy virtue until death. Beg God to increase my love for the most blessed sacrament, and inspire all with whom I come in contact with a deep and lasting devotion to this most holy sacrament. St. Clair, pray for me, and beg God to bless all those for whom I pray this day. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.